even though it's going to be, I'm filming it live, uh, but for most of you guys, it's going to be a replay. In this video, there's a couple of weaknesses that the XRT has, and in this video, I'm going to show you and sort them out. So, one of the weak spots I've already fixed, and that is coming out in a video. Let's get that body off. Got these four clips underneath the body, and then it just lifts up like this. So this is probably the hottest car out at the moment. This is the RC that everyone's sort of talking about at the minute. I'd say the hottest car of the year 2023. Wing mount, that was the first major problemo. So I've put a 3D printed one on, that one died straight away. This one here is from GPM. It looks like it's made out of nylon. I don't know why this screw's so long, that's how it came. So we're gonna test this one out soon. But that's just a bit of an annoying weakness. You know, you break that, it doesn't end your day, you can carry on bashing. The worst weakness are the bell cranks. When you land a bit funny, you might hit a wheel, they do break really easily. So in here is a prototype bell crank from M2C. And I've been testing it and it's actually been perfect. But some of the other boys that do testing, a couple of them have actually broken the prototype one. So now I've got the proper M2C bell cranks. And these are the ones that are the ones that you guys are going to get when you buy them. So I've just got to take it apart, whip these things on, and then we're going to go and do like a, a big XRT race coming out soon. We're going to get a load of us together with XRTs. We're going to have a race. So... Because it's live, we've got the comments up on the screen here. So if any of you guys have got any questions, and far away. And I will waffle to you guys while I'm wrenching on this thing. And I've done it before, taking it off, so it should be a bit easier than last time. I think we've just got to remove this body mounting system here. And then we remove this top plate, and I think all this steering assembly is then going to lift out. Right, waffle, waffle, waffle. Let's start wrenching. Let's bung you down here. So you can see what's going on. Bung you there like that. Hopefully my phone doesn't fall over. Get some glovage on. So what, what have you guys been up to? Let me know in the comments. What have you guys been up to? Have you been playing RC? Been bashing? Been wrenching? Working? Relaxing? What have you been up to? On this fine Sunday afternoon, here in Britain anyway. Right, uh, so four screws out there, and then this should all come out. I've got a new cup as well, look. On my last one, it fell on the floor and I smashed it, so I've got a new one. Rapid RC says, hi Kev, love all your vid. Thanks to who? David Turner in the house, David Turner the legend. He comments in almost all of my videos and livos. How you doing, Dave? Oh, wrong way. Don't want to be doing it the wrong way and stripping the gears out. The press out, I mean. Mr. Danny's going out bashing. Nice, nice. And Tiss is working on his Traxxas Summit. Nice, nice. Right, keep these to the side. I might end up taking the wheels off, actually, but we'll see. We'll see how we get on. Ugh. It normally makes it a lot easier to wrench on these things when you take the wheels off. Benjamin saving up for, oh no, who was that? Did some crawling this morning. Someone else has said they're saving up for a new RC car. But I missed that comment, it's gone off my screen now. Right, that's that, that's that, that's that. So now, we've got, I think, six screws that hold this top plate on and we should be able to access it all. Is the M2C chassis worth it, says Rapid RC. Uh, yes, if you're gonna bash extremely. On the on this brace, I haven't tried it yet, so I don't know. I mean, unlike the armors, I'd say definitely put an M2C chassis on it or Scorch chassis. If you're gonna bash on these, well, I can't comment on this one, but on the X-Max, for example. Oh no, another screw here. On the X-Max, I've found it kind of responds better to leave it stock everything. And if you start adding more weight to it, it starts becoming more unreliable. So that's that's what I kind of found with it. But if you're going to go and add big motors, 
then you do really need all the M2C chassis braces and everything because you're going to start breaking it. But I quite like my X Max, it's fairly stock. Why is this not coming off? Let's get these screwed out so they're not going to fly out. I don't know why this cover's not coming off. Chad says he loves the lives. Well, hey, thanks, dude. Gives me a little opportunity to have a little chat with some of you guys. I get so many messages on Instagram and Facebook, personal messages and DMs, that it's just impossible to keep up with them. There's so many. So if I do these live, I can kind of chat with everybody while I'm doing a bit of wrenching. Now, some people say, oh, Kev's rude, he doesn't respond to DMs. It's like, if you get 100 a day, imagine he responded, and then the next, that person responds again, and you could end up sending, like, 10-plus messages per person to every single person. Uh, it just gets mad. There won't, there, won't, there won't be any time left to do anything else. I'll just be chatting on, on my phone all day. Right, that's that off. So like this, I get to have a chat with you guys, and everyone else can sort of muck in as well. Um, right, next, take this centre bit off here. I don't know if you guys can see. Can you see what's going on there? The trouble is with this phone stand I got, it's not the most secure, sturdy of things, it just wants to fall over. <laughs> waffle, waffle from California! Says 65 Baja. So these are very similar to work on than the next Max. A little bit of difference here and there, but very similar. Well, I've got an armour to work on as well in a minute. So we're going to fix this one, then we're going to get onto the armours. I've got a Red Cat Volcano 16 and I love it, says Brittany. Oh, wicked. A lot of you guys keep telling me to get a Red Cat. I haven't had one yet. So I will have to one day... Try one out. What red cat shall I get, guys? Let me know in the comments, guys. What red cat shall I get? Can you bring the Russell to a drive out? I'm sure I will at some point. What's the massive issue? Bell cranks and wing mount. They are the two major weaknesses. Right. Should come out now. Tips for beginners on starting YouTube, says RC Gavin. Just do it for the fun of it, dude. If you're doing it for the money, you're probably going to be severely disappointed. Uh, so do it for the fun of it. Um, make the thumbnail clickable. You know, something interesting. Intrigue the viewers. Uh, make the videos interesting. Don't put anything boring in. If you put anything boring in the videos, people just get bored and just won't bother watching your videos anymore. But number one, just have fun doing it. I mean, if you see so many people and just go into YouTube for the money, most people are going to be severely disappointed. Uh, right, I think uh, we've got to take the bottom plate off to get this off. But I'm going to see if I can do it without. I reckon I can do it without. Right, well, let's do this one here first. Right, let's get these new ones opened up. Yeah, those scissors are good. Kev, do you have a classic rustler? Uh, I've got a rustler, I don't know if it's classic. It's one of the first cars on the channel that I've got about, I've got it about, Seven years ago, you first class as classic. Right, so I've got two sets here. One set is from Max, and the other set is from me. So, right, we'll give those to Max next time we see him. And right, this should come apart. I think this will pull out of here. Let me get the new one on there. So this is a new M2C plastic, some sort of heavy duty plastic, whatever they call it. And it took him a while to sort of mess around with the different grades of it because if it's too flexible, then the car drives rubbish. And if it's too too hard, then it breaks too easily. So you've got to get the balance just right. Any more lossy SBR videos? Yep, yeah, I'm sure there will be, dude, at some point. Right. Get 
these bearings back in here. That one in there. That wall in there. Oh, they're a bit tighter this time. That's nice. On the prototype ones, they were a little bit loose. So I wedged a bit of paper in there as well to make them a bit tighter because otherwise you put it back together and the bearing kept falling out. So these ones are a bit of a, a tighter squeeze. Squeeze. All right, lovely. That's better. That's better, huh? All right, that's that one done, look. So, yeah, it's got some flex there, look. You can feel the flexage. It's got a metal post, it's got the plastic, it's got the plastic or the whatever heavy duty plastic nylon, whatever the stuff is, what they call it there. All right, that one can go back in there. Would you recommend the Lossy LMT Grave Digger? Yes, if you're a Monster Truck fan, definitely. They're a little bit more clumsy than a normal basher. So if you love monster trucks, definitely. If you want stability, get something else. They do roll over a bit easier. So here's a little upgrade I did. So on the steering servo saver, it's got one screw that goes through it. So I did two upgrades. I did, if you watched the video on my main channel, I made a little spacer from some welding wire and put that in there to make the spring tension a bit tighter. And then I put a screw all the way through and put a nut on this end here. Because this can come loose and your steering goes bad. Well, it can on the X-Max anyway. And this is sort of similar design. So chances are, if it comes loose on the X-Max, it'll probably come loose on this as well. well. Do I need to actually take that apart? I don't... Yeah, I think I do. Ah, so look, on this one here, the prototype one, we can, we can see, look, it's got stress weaknesses in the plastic. So this probably would have broken after a while. Right, uh, let's get it. Let's get it taken apart. When's the next long jump? Oh, I don't know. Don't know yet. Right. Now, there. I want to do it with a sausage. That is off there. And then this piece should pop, ah, that's it, right. So this piece here pops out the top here. So look, you see, on that prototype one, you can see the color of the plastics change where it's starting to get stressed. So that probably give it a little bit of time would have probably broken there. It's actually really thin. I mean, that's just the design of the XRT. They, just, they should have made this whole piece a lot thicker. But there's not really much that anyone can do, even like aftermarket people, there's not much you can do about it because you, you've only got the limitation of the space that you give them. But this should be a lot stronger than stock. It's all still, everything can still break though. You know, a lot of big misconception is when it comes to all these upgrades that people think it's never going to break again. Everything breaks, everything, even the upgraded parts, they can still break as well. Nothing's indestructible. When you're bashing, anything can go wrong. So the idea is, is not to make it unbreakable, but just to make it a little bit more reliable. Uh, and where's that? Oh, where's my nut gone? Lost my nut. Oh, there it is. Any more speed videos coming up? Yes. There will be. I'm gearing up now. It's our speed season coming up. So we've got potential of three new places that we can go on that are fairly local. They look really promising. We've got Rosso as well coming up again this year. So we're going to be doing that. A few of us, few of us are actually going to go down there this time. I think Razzie's going to come over again. So I'm looking forward to the speed running this year. Should be good. I'm still a newbie when it comes to speed running. I'm still learning it all. Oh, we've got Claire in the house. How you doing, Claire? I didn't actually see you come up, but I see everyone saying, hey, Claire. <laughs> Go 
Got to keep more eye on the chat. Any team associated videos coming up? Uh, don't think so. It's unplanned at the minute. All right. I've also got a perfect pass servo in, in here. Well, that's the first shift with this company. One of the best servos that I've used. Probably the best all round servo, actually. If you take price into consideration as well. I mean, for Tarbo, make an amazing servo, but the price of that is just mad. It's over, it's over two hundred pounds. Right. So I'm keen to get this bit back in quick because the bearings can drop out the bottom. The, the bearing on this side doesn't seem quite quite as tight in there as the other side, but we're in. Right, we are in, boys. Where's the lossy SBR? Up on the shelf, dude. Let's get this done and I'll show you some of the RC cars. You guys keep asking where they are. Oh, come on, go in. Don't, don't, don't be a battle. Yes, I'm coming in. Yes. Get an RC tank. I've got an RC tank. I haven't used it for a while, though. People are doing speed videos of XRT and it's fast. I haven't gone down that route yet, but I have got actually plans of building another XRT that's going to be more powerful. This one here, I want to be able to bash it, so I don't want to add too much weight, but I'm going to get another one. And I'm going to give it a power build, so Max 5, probably Hobby Wing 1100 kV motor. Is the Father Tiger getting reliability mods soon? Eh, uh, maybe. Maybe. I mean, I do love that Thunder Tiger EK4, but it is pretty crap. I mean, I just got it for nostalgia. Have a bit of, have a little bit of fun with it and just have it looking on the shelf good. But yeah, I probably will. I mean, it all depends how much time I've got. You know, I'll, I'll probably have to spend a whole week on it. And when I've got other projects I've got to do and other work to get on with, I've got to prioritise on the videos that are going to get the most views. When are you going to fix the lossy DBXL? Oh, I'm going to start on that in a minute, actually. I'm not going to do it live, though. Uh, I've got to send... I'm going to put the Taylor 50... Uh, no, 35cc engine into that one. And I've got to send that engine back because he's going to give it a V2 conversion. And in the last video where I ran it, when it was in the Lossy 5, I kind of bashed it a little bit and then it started bogging, almost like it was going lean, but it's running good before. So I'm just going to send it back, let Taylor have a look at it, give it the version 2 conversion. I snapped the fuel nipple off the carb as well, trying to work on it, silly me. And then that engine's going to be the DBXL in the Lossy. Oh, Oh yeah, we got we got our lossy five uh, T video coming up soon with the fifty cc engine in there. I got a bit carried away, bent the chassis, completely fried the engine, completely overheated it. So that video will be out in the next few days. So I've got to get, get, get a new chassis for that. Hopefully the engine survived. I mean, I cooked that engine so hot that it wouldn't even turn off. I hit the kill switch, and it was just you know like when you get pre ignition. I think it was doing that. It just wouldn't turn off. I hit the kill switch on the radio. I hit the kill switch on the actual car itself and it would not turn off. It was just screaming its head off. Like lean as anything, it wouldn't shut down. So maybe we've killed it, but it still works. So have you found a piece of land yet? Uh, kind of, kind of. I have. Uh, you're just going through, hopefully being able to buy it. But there's all the legal stuff to go through and all that stuff, so I don't want to say I'm in there or not in there until I fully know myself. But it's looking good. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we can have more workshop space, land to play with these things. Right, that's this one done. And it does actually feel a lot more flexible. I can feel it. When I'm moving this, I can feel that really flexing. That's what we want. 
Right, boom. That's the XRT ready to go. We. That's the XRT ready to go again. We're going to get a few of us are going to go up to Ark at some point and we're going to do some XRT racing. Uh, right, next, I've got an armour to work on. Oh, actually, I'm not quite finished. I've got to put these bits back on. Uh. Shilly me! Uh. That's quite an easy repair, actually. Which way does that go on? Be a nice idea. Right, like that. Are those Wide Max A arms? Uh, these are stock arms, that's how they come. But I've got the M2C extended hexes because I'm running the Armour Outcast 8S wheels and the offset on these is a little bit less than the, top, than the wheels that come with it. So I'll put the extended hexes on it so to make it about roughly the same width as a stock one. Careful what them screws do you use for the Armour 8S diff case? Oh, I can't remember, dude. They're definitely a lot longer, though. I mean, I use a drill bit and drill out the bulkheads even deeper. And then, well, what you want to do, really, is just get yourself a wrench, drill the hole as deep as you can go, make sure you don't drill into anything metal like your diff gears or anything, and then just poke this through the hole, put your finger on it, and then measure how long it is, and then just get some screws that are just like maybe a couple of millimetres shorter. Just type the size that you need into eBay. Loads of screws on there. I can't remember exactly offhand what, what size I put in there. But definitely like double the length, something like that. Build out a monster truck and keep it in the States to drive at Monster Jam. Yes, I am, a, I am actually in talks with someone about the possibility of building another truck in America and leaving it there. And they look after it, they transport it. Oops. They repair it, so all I've got to do, all I've got to do is turn up, smash it up, and then fly home. I don't know about it, but yeah, yeah that's just, we're just talking Instagram at the minute. We've got to have a proper phone call about it. But yeah, maybe in the future that is a possibility. That'd probably suit me perfectly. What's the best car to start in nitro oh i don't know i mean if you're a beginner to ask you all together i'd stay away from nitro altogether really i mean they're fun when they work if you've got someone to help you with them brilliant but if you haven't i mean i struggle with them i struggle tuning them and i've been doing nitro for years and i still struggle with them <laughs> uh savage is a probably the best nitro basher but it can be a bit finicky to get going right so, I don't know, out of the box, reliable. I tell the most reliable nitro that I've recently had is, is that a puplet? When you guys ask me why I wear gloves, look. This could potentially be a puplet. <laughs> they come off for of that car. So, you never know what dirt you find on there. Also, when you do a lot of wrenching like me, you know, I wrench on the monster truck, I'm wrenching on on RCs all the time and you're out in the dirt all the time it really dries your skin out so you get all these cracks on your skin and then you get dirt in it then the cracks gets deeper then you get more dirt in there then the crack gets even deeper then it never heals up so sometimes I go through a phase where I don't wear gloves and then when it starts getting like a bit of surface cracks on there then I start wearing gloves at the minute looking pretty good at the minute look but I've still got a few little minor cracks starting so if I don't stay on top of it they're going to turn into big cracks and then they never go away Come to Canada for some monster chair. Maybe one day. I like your mug. Yeah, this thing's massive. I had the other one before, the white one, but I smashed it outside. I had it outside on top of one on top of a post. And wind blew it off, smashed the handle off. <sighs> Always wear gloves when working on diffs and shock oils. Yuck. Yeah. <laughs> you need pit crew. Yes, David. Where's the best place to get RC parts? Oh, depends where. I'll get, I'll get most of mine from Redfin's. Whatever your local shop is, you know, support your local hobby shop. If you don't have a local hobby shop, then we've got, uh, we've got like Model Sport and Wheel Spin or A-Main from America. Grease won't hurt you. Uh, well, don't wear gloves then, Philip. <laughs> um, I like to 
look after my health, you know, I don't want all these petrol based petroleum products being absorbed into my skin. Uh, all, all these man made things going into your body, food, greases, oils, medications, all this stuff that's not natural. Uh, yeah, my personal opinion is it doesn't do you any good. I don't want it in my body. If it's not natural, I don't want it. And all these greases, you know, it's just, it's not, it's not good, is it? It's all these highly processed uh, bloody old dinosaurs, isn't it? <laughs> Speed run videos and Jay, yeah. All right, got well, a top secret build over here. I haven't really shown it yet. I'm not really going to show too much of it because the video is coming out soon. But look at that. Look at that sneak peek for some of you guys. Look at the size of this bad boy. This is going to get 100 horsepower. Uh, 32S. Way, way, way overpowered. It's stretched. I mean, this thing, if the tyres can hold up. If these tyres hold up, or I can find some tyres that hold up, and it doesn't backflip, this is going to do something amazing. Because my belief is the longer you make the car, the, the, the less likely it is to backflip. And this, this one here is actually the Hobeo Hyper. I'm giving you all the secrets now, and I? Look. I wasn't going to show it yet. But I've got a video coming out soon on it. I don't really keep any secrets on this channel. Everything I build, I show it all on video. But I didn't really want to show too much of it until I actually got to run it and see how it goes. And then... Then start showing it, but oh well. <laughs> Catch out the bag. There you go. Right, um, lossy five T. This is the one with the Taylor fifty in there. I've been the chassis. It's got all these nice aluminium bits in there. There's a video of that is coming up very soon. I've edited it. I'm just got to let it out. Well, that chassis is buckled. I wasn't going to bash it too hard. I got carried away. Uh, so other RC cars we got. Got the Harvey. This is last year's speed car that we're going to get out again this year. So that had two Hobby Wing Max 4 combos in it, but now it's, it's got two. In, no, had one in there. 174 mile an hour, I think it was, with one Hobby Wing Max 4 combo. Now it's got two Hobby Wing Max 4 combos in there. Uh, that's the Lambo one that's, that's probably going to go into a burnout car. That's an Omar Felony. Water Crossing X Max, my go to X Max, and just a stock X Max. Creighton 4S, the old one, and Outcast 4S, the new one. I'm just gearing up here to do a little micro video and also a Banggood dirt, dirt cheap video. Uh, oh, this is the raffle winner. I forgot the dude's name, but if you go on the website, I'll put a link down below, actually, to my raffles. Uh, well, it's a competition, actually. It's not The website's called raffle, but legally it's actually a competition. It's not actually a raffle. Uh, but so this this is being sent away to uh, this dude in America. So I've got to say, I'm going to send this away tomorrow. This is the Armor Vortex, with the six S brushless combo in there, and the other competition I got going on is for a TRX4 high lift. So if you guys want to know about that, you want to see the winner to that or whatever, link is in the first line of the description. I've yeah, got a little jet boat there. Raminator wise, this one's ATCC. That's all repaired. This one's the electric brushless one, 12S Hobby Wing Max 4 ESC in there. That one's all good to go. We've got the Grave Digger, which I broke in the first video. I've done a save. It went up on, on the front like that. I went flat out and it landed flat out like that. Wheels went from full speed to nothing in a split second and it broke the diff cup. So that one's all ready to go again. Um, it's, I wasn't going to bash this one, but I mean, Grave Digger is legendary to be bashed. So it kind of has to. But, you know, we can make it nice again. I'm going to order... A spare body shell for it so we can have a basher body and we can have a nice shelf queen body when it comes to the chassis and everything nothing really breaks i mean the good thing is with these the main parts don't break you just break little things when when i jumped this thing and it done that that awful crash and the whole back axle folded under it was only a tiny little handful of parts it looks really bad but then when you actually come to fix it it's only a few little tiny minor parts uh, this one here this one's the mud raminator. This one's got the HO engine into it. Uh, so last video we took that mudding, but it did get a bit swamped. Where the filter is, the filter's under there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, just there. All the water got in there and it stalled. And it took a while to get it running again. So I might get an outerwear cover to put on there, but what I really want to do is turn it over and see 
there's not much space in there. We're going to have to drill some new holes in the chassis, I think. And turn this whole filter mechanism over and have it pointing upwards. But then someone says, oh, you've got the exhaust there. It's going to be breathing in its own farts. <laughs> so maybe we also have to do something with this exhaust pipe. Is maybe weld something on there and have it coming out somewhere else. Maybe we could turn it into zoomies. Maybe we could have... Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. What else we got? We got the Rustler 4x4, the Hoss, the Rival. This is the Creighton 4S, the new one. So we're going to fix that in a minute. I've broken arm on it. So we're going to do that in a minute. Once I stop showing you all these cars. We've got the Rival M210. We've got the Skeeter. Uh, Minimax. Minimax version 2. MT8, which is one of the weakest RC cars that I've ever had. Which is really a shame because the MT10... This thing was amazing. This thing took such a beating. Even Stimpy couldn't kill it. I think we're going to have to give it to Max and let Max have a go on it, see if he can kill it. But Stimpy couldn't kill it. Um, I've broken it a couple of times, but nothing really. I mean, that's probably one of the strongest RKC cars that I've got. It's crazy. And probably one of the cheaper ones as well. So when they come out with the MT8, everyone was like, oh man, yeah, an, an ape scale version of that with that durability. No, you fart next to it, this happens. Up here, we've got the 30 degree north buggy. Uh, so that one, I might get out again soon. We've got the Roven Baja there. We've got this thing, I forgot what it's called. Four wheel steer, axial cat pro, is it, or something like that. And then we've got the XLT there. Oh, that, there's a video coming out with that soon. I got carried away. Severe durability test. This is one of the strongest chassis I've ever seen, metal chassis. I mean, I, I did bend it, and when you see the video, you see why, how it got bent. But when I tried to straighten it, I had something there and something there, and a bit of wood there, and I put that underneath the monster truck. Let me show you. Let me show you. So I've got the pallet truck there, this thing. I've that thing there, the chassis, the chassis was across the two legs on there, and then there was a block of wood on the chassis of the XLT, and then on this great big monster truck here, I done a bit of wood on the axle there. Then I pumped up this pallet truck, it lifted the whole monster truck off the floor, because I could turn the wheels, and it still didn't want to straighten that chassis. I mean, I don't know what that chassis is made of, but that's something else. I mean, I think companies like Armour need to take note and make their chassis out of this material. That was absolutely insane. And that video is going to come out the next few days. It's all edited. It's on there. So i just got to make a thumbnail and publish it. Uh, we got this, the DBXL. I've not had this one out for a little while. So I might do some sort of upgrade video on this. I think Vitavon do like a 70-75 chassis. The chassis is bent on this. So maybe we'll do something, upgrade the drive shafts, give it a bit more power. This one I'm going to work on in a minute, actually, after this live stream. And what's going to go in there is this engine here, which is a Taylor 35cc. So that is like, I don't know, I'm guessing, probably double the power of the stock engine. And that engine was in the lossy 5T, but it's now got that 50cc in there. But it needs semi-rebuild again now because I kind of trashed it. Uh, Creighton A test. This one here is Mamba uh, Castle XLX2 in there. Loads of power. Ridiculous. Way too fast. It's absolutely mad. Loads of upgrades on there. M2C chassis look. Things is ridiculous. This one here. Uh, this one's also got a few upgrades but it's not as bad, not as mad as that one. I think this one's got hobby wing stuff in there. Max 5 combo, I think, if I remember right. Yep, all Max 5'd up. I've got to put this on it, actually. This is a this is a must-do mod on armors. Right, let me get it out of the packet and I'll show you. So this is made by Bigfoot Customs. Go on Facebook and check him out. And this is a motor wedge. So the big problem with cars with metal chassis is that most of them, the motor is only supported on one end. So when you jump... The motor tries to bend off of the motor mount and snap off the mount and it can smash the can into the chassis. I've egg-shaped so many motors. So you get one of these, you slide it underneath the motor and then you support it across the whole bottom of it, look. And he'll custom make these to whatever size you need. So you tell him the width, you tell him the radius here, uh, you tell him the length of it, basically give him the three dimensions and 
you come back with this. And you can either wedge it in and hope it stays there, or you can put some double-sided tape under it and hold it in. So it all depends how accurate my measurements are. I've had some that just wedge in perfectly, and other ones where it's been a bit too tight. I've had to shave a bit off, and other times it's a bit too loose, and I had to put some double-sided tape on the bottom. But if you measure it right, it will go straight in, and I kind of, I don't know, guessed. <laughs> so this is my X Max M2C edition. So this one's got Hobby Wing Max 5 motor in there and 1100kV. A hobby wing motor. This has got the M2C chassis brace, which is a must if you start adding all that weight. Once you start adding the metal motor mounts, you're going to start breaking stuff. So if you're going to start adding metal in there and taking away flex, and you're going to have to go the whole hog and add metal everywhere. Well, not everywhere, but you know, you're going to, you need a metal brace on the bottom. Because otherwise, if you just put this metal motor mount system in, what I've seen what happens is the chassis breaks in half exactly where the mount ends. And, and so then if you put this this alloy brace under it, it ties it all together and it makes it more reliable. But in my opinion, though, you're still best off leaving it fairly stock, not making it too much heavier and just happy bashing. But for those people that want more power, you, you kind of have to go that way. So it all depends what you want. We got the Axial SEX6. I want to put some portals on that one, actually, and change the body. And I've got some new tyres to put on it, some Hyrax, I think, and some nice alloys. Up there we got the, oh, I keep forgetting what these things are, is it Desert Ray, Baja Ray, San Ray, whatever way it is. All these rays, I keep forgetting what way it is. We got the Barbie Go-Kart Nitro. We got the Hyper MT Nitro. Big disappointment for me actually on that one. Loads of problems. Thing keeps going wrong every time I use it, so I can't be giving up with it. We got the Hyper VS. Amazing buggy, really durable. Then we got the Revo 3.3. This one's got electric start on the button start that Jason at Redfin made for me. But I'm going to put an OS engine into it. The stock Traxxas engine, I can't keep getting it running right. Even Mick, the engine tuning expert, had troubles getting it running right. So out with that engine, in with the OS. Stretch Talion, this one's got the Mojave chassis. I can't remember, is it, is it a Scorch chassis? Oh, this one's the M2C chassis on this one. On that Mojave, we've got the Scorch chassis. This is the Kaisho MP10 race truggy. I had it out the other day. And my brother's just edit editing the video for that at the moment. Pablo in the house. How you doing, dude? Really want a Hyper 7 one day. Yeah, this one's a Hyper, Hyper VS. Uh, man, that Pico engine, that runs so nice. I was running it in and it started raining. So I put it underneath my Land Rover, sat in the car to wait for it to stop raining. And it must have been underneath the Land Rover for probably 15 minutes just idling. And it just didn't stall. It runs lovely. I've tuned it a little bit, and, I, and I'm actually managed to tune it pretty good. So half the time when you're having troubles tuning in nitros, it might just be because the engine's crap. Because this one, I managed to tune it really nice. And then next video with this, we're going to take it racing. I'm going to see how well I can do with no help from a professional. See how well I come. And then Mick Craddock's going to come along and give it his special setup. He's going to come along with me on the race day, help me race it, give me tips and tricks, and then see what comparison is going to be doing that. Next up, we've got the sledge. This one here's got all the M2C stuff on it. Absolute tank. We still need, if any of you guys know, let me know in the comments. I need some stronger shock rod ends. These break every single time. Pain in the butt. Massive weak spot on this. But all in all, a really tough truck. They really take a beating. When people say this or Creighton, I don't know. I don't know. Both are good. I think it depends if you prefer tractors or armour. I like them both, really. Both have got pros and cons. Both really good. This is one of my older Creightons. Needs a little bit of TLC, but it does work. This one here is one of my favourite RCs, actually. This one here is the fire team, but I'll put a Savage Body on it. Love this truck. This truck is amazing. There's my Summit with a brushless system. This is my old... Not my first ever Savage XL, because I've, I've had loads of them and sold them back in the day. But this one here I've probably had for about, I don't know, 15 years probably. I've had that one. At least 10 years. It's got a LRP32 engine, loads of power, bulletproof transmission, loads of other upgrades. I need to do another video on this soon, actually. I've got some other upgrades to put on it, so I might do another video on this soon. This is my new Savage X, the re-release the, the re one, whatever you want to call it. So I put this, the Chevy El Camino body on there. I've got the two-speed gearbox finally working. So I've got to edit that video, and that video's going to be out soon. We've got the Kyosho USA one. Definitely not for bashing. If you're going to bash this thing, you're going to, you're going to be breaking it. 
but it drives so nice. If you like monster trucks and you want it a bit scale, I mean, this is semi-scale, you know, the diff pumpkins are not in the middle. It hasn't really got proper four link. So I'd say this is semi-scale, but free speed transmission, engine, there's such a lovely little engine in there. It runs so good. So this is actually one of my favorite RCs actually, not for bashing. You can do mild bashing, you know, like scale bashing, but definitely not for going to the moon. So there we've got the other crate in the XB. We've got the Co-Rally, whatever thing it is there, which I didn't like to start with, but I actually love it now. Just not for extreme bashing. Mild bashing, lovely. If you want extreme bash, go with this or with a Creighton. This one here, it's a lot lighter. Or it feels lighter. It might not actually be lighter, but it feels lighter. Drives really nice. For a basher, it handles really good. It feels almost like a racer. Uh, so if you're going to be doing normal bashing and you want a fast car, that Kronos XTR, whatever it's called. Uh, yeah, XTR. actually really like it. Chassis is super strong as well. Decent 70, 75 chassis on that. Up there we've got my Team C T8T. That's actually the first brushless car I ever had. It started life as a nitro, and then I converted it into a brushless. Up here we've got a little mini e Revo, and we got, oh yeah, this thing, which is actually just a body with wheels glued on it to make it look like it, but I just did a video on the world's worst RC car. The worst RC car that I ever had was this, the EK4. And then you guys said, what about the Mammoth? Yeah, I think the Mammoth's probably worse, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Mammoth's definitely worse. But, you know, out of all the mainstream pop-up brands, you know, this is more like a little DIY car that a school kid made sort of looking thing. But on the proper mainstream cars, EK4 was the worst. Here we've got another race buggy. This one here is a MP10 Kyosho. This one's got the Reds engine. Sand my servos. This is one of the mixed old race cars. And the idea is, because we soon, we're going to go racing with this one. This is the MP10 30th anniversary car. And this one here, this one's all out. This is absolutely no expense spared on this one. This is the best of everything. You can, I don't think you can get much better when it comes to 1.8 Valley Cross. So this is the 30th anniversary. So that is that Inferno there, MP10 30th anniversary. Most people that bought this either sold it and made like double the money back on it, or they just got it sitting as a shelf queen. But I want to use it. We're going to race it. I, I got the body painted by my buddy Alan, and I wanted it painted like the original Inferno. It's like a, trib a, a tribute. So we got these Fataba servos. These are stupidly expensive. These are probably the best servos you can buy, but they are so expensive. Uh, so we got those servos in there. I've got like 50 kilos of torque and insane speed. They're just nuts, but complete overkill. Uh, we got the OS Speed Engine 21. We've got Sanmo Radio in it. But this one being limited edition, look, it comes with all the carbon fibre bits. We've got the carbon fibre towers, carbon fibre brace there, carbon fibre radio tray, more carbon fibre around there. And it's got on there, look, one off 300. Can you see that? That focuses on there. It says it down there, look. 30th anniversary, one off 300 cars, so... I don't know, some of you guys are going to think it's sacrilege to race it. But I think shelf queens look better when they've had a little bit of use. What do you guys reckon? What do you guys reckon? Does it look nicer when it's never been used? Or would it look nicer to have a little bit of history behind it? It's been on the channel. You know, get, everyone gets to see it go. And then we clean it all up and then put it on the shelf. And then it's still going to be nice, but it's going to have a few scrapes on it, you know. To me, a good used car looks nicer than something that's never been used at all. Because otherwise, it might just be a prop. You don't even know if it works. I mean, as far as you know with this, it might just be fake, mightn't it? It might just be there to look like something. <laughs> Race it, can't take it with you yet. Use it. Get it on the track, boy. It needs scars. Yeah, all you guys say it needs to be used. Yeah, I agree. Oh, I'm not going to slaughter it. You know, it's not going to go to the skate park. I'm not going to abuse it. But it needs to be used. So that, that will be coming out soon. Man, it takes ages when you talk about every RC car you've got. I've got loads more upstairs as well. We're not even going to bother going up there. We've got the, the Super Baja, way, is it? Is that the Baja one? SBR, whatever. Got that one. Uh, we've got the Traxxas XR, XO1 in under there, look. All repaired. After we've done that big jump with it. 
we got my infection, new infection version two. Video coming out with this soon. Got a few minis under there, what I've been filming actually. Uh, a couple of bang goods down here that I've been procrastinating with for a long while. A helicopter in there. Here's a little Tamiya car we're doing. We're gonna be doing a YouTuber race again. This time everyone with the same car. Everyone's gonna have a Tamiya TTO2. So this is the body that I'm gonna put on my one. We've got a load of engines here. We've got a V8 engine, we've got a shove tail engine, uh, we've got a straight six that we've got to build. Engines are building up here. We've got to, got to get onto them. We've got a drag slash. We've got the car that's caught fire twice and done long jumps and off-road speed runs. We've got the LMTs there, son of a digger, son of a digger stock. And we've got the grave digger there. And this one's got all the trill stuff on it. So we've got front and rear wheel steering. Trill 70-75 axles. I think we've got the Trill gearbox in there as well. Uh, we've got the Ludicrous servos. Amazing servos, actually. Really happy with those. And uh, next week, we've got my first X-Max. This is a 6S X-Max. I sold it to Vinnie back in the day. Uh, Vinnie converted it into an 8S X-Max. And then I swapped it with him for a brand new X-Max because I wanted my original one back. Uh, here's my Rift. Severely modified. Uh, stock, I was really disappointed with this car. I didn't like it. I mean, you couldn't go slow with it because it was cogged and you couldn't go fast with it because it fell over, so it was pretty pointless. But now, I've got a two-speed transmission in there so you can crawl it. I've got a censored castle system in there with way more power and that thing now crawls and goes fast. It does everything, it's amazing, I love it. And you guys love it as well because nearly every video I do with that gets a million views. So maybe we've got to bring it out again. E-Revo, which needs a bit more love, but I'm not a massive fan of it, really. Don't know why, I prefer Kratons, really, and the Sledge. Mad Force, one of the original ones. That little engine in there runs beautifully, so I might have to get that out again soon. we got the Outcast 4S version 1. My rally car build, which is a Hobeo Hyper VS, I believe, underneath it, or something similar. Might be the 8.5 or a mixture of both. We've got the Slashes. For original slash and the ultimate slash, the Banggood RJ, whatever it's called. What's it called? I forgot what it's called now. RGT. Traxxas Hot Rod. Laser Nut. Banggood Special, Banggood Special, Banggood Special, Banggood Special, 6x6. Six six. Uh, this is my Game Over Monster Truck replica that isn't finished yet. It's actually a HBI Wheelie King. And my, my buddy that's making me the stickers has got the body at the minute so we can wrap up, so you can get the wrap made for it. Manta Ray, another TRX4. This is a Axial SCX24, and this one's got all the trill stuff on it. So, amazing little truck there. This is the waterproof TRX4, we just done a video on that a little while ago. That's on the channel. And then we've got my first TRX4, which can run on 6S. Stupidly fast. This is the one that's been to the skate park. Actually, my second most viewed video ever, this one. If you go on the channel and click on most popular, and the second video in, it's actually got that body on it. Uh, so, but this car, and it's just mad. This one here is sort of a replica of that one, but one made to look nice and to look after and to use normally. And this one there is like a, it's like a basher now. Uh, top force that I turned into a manta ray and my original manta ray. This is the first RC car I ever had. The first ever uh, hobby grade RC. I had a couple of Nikos before, but this is the first hobby grade RC car. There's a video of this on the channel actually. Uh, what else we got? What else we got? Right, under it, the new Savage. This is the Savage, the new XL. I'm going to change the body on it because I don't like it. I've got a few upgrades on it. Runs really nice. I can't remember if the gears work on it or not. I've forgotten. Gonna get that out again. Here's another Savage XL, but an original one I got off of eBay. This is a XL Octane. The video was on that very recent. This is the video that came out today on the EK4. Underneath it, we've got a Notorious. That. Oh, under there, look, we've got this little mini SBR, whatever it's called. Up there, we've got the Rustler, two wheel drive. We've got Banggood up there. Under there, we've got the. Can you see that? That is the Project Nitro rock crawler. We need to get that out again soon. Right, let's repair the armour. That's enough waffling. Bloody hell, I'm waffled out. I'm trying to do that as quick as possible. Oh, oh there's, there's, there's more. We've got more. We've got more. So we've got my race car. We've got this little car, which is the most viewed RC car on my channel. If you click on my channel, click videos, 
on the main channel on this channel there on the main channel click on that click on the on my videos and then on the most popular that is my most viewed video ever with that little banger special my infraction the original one my udr one of my favorite rc cars burnout car uh schumacher atom one this is another race buggy associated b 6.3 that one over there to 6.4 the new one the green one there we got the first speed car with a twin motor uh oh we got a little mini game over monster truck this one here's the Fury Tech Monster Truck. Tony from CCXRC made me the body shell. My friend Lee Howden made me the wrap to put on it. We ever review any planes in the future? Yeah, I actually want to get a plane. Look, thinking of getting this plane here. This is massive. Right, I'll show you how big it is in inches. Uh, I think. The more higher skill level planes get further up. I want to get a jet as well. My idea is to get a jet, a real one with a turbine. I don't think this one is, it's probably electric. But I get a real jet with a turbine in it. Fly it, do all the stunts with it, knowing me it's going to crash. Then take the engine out and put it in there. Imagine that. The turbine in the back of that. Can you do lossy RZR way? Mm, maybe. I've got one of those. There's a video on my channel of me flying that. I try to do a knife edge with it. I'm not very good with planes, but I try to do all the moves, so every time it crashes. I tried doing a knife edge and it went wrong. I got an inverted circuit out of it though. I could do that. Uh, where is it? Where is it? That. No, oh no, that's a mini one. The one I really want is the beast. But when the real beast crashed and the pilot died and they discontinued the model beast. But the beast, uh, just as the name suggests, was a beast. That one. Wingspan is 71 inches. But the actual proper beast is even wider. I want to get one. I keep looking on eBay. You know, if anybody knows of a beast for sale, I want to buy it. Any of you guys know of one of these for sale, let me know. I want to buy it. Not, not this one, the beast. A good condition one. I probably won't even fly it. I'll probably just hang it up in here or something. I'm not, I'm not really a plain guy, but I, I really want the Hangar 9 Beast. Put a turbine on the X-Max. Yeah, maybe. You should build a rocket. <laughs> you can get those hobby rockets, can't you? I mean, you're going to use the Rustler 4 before? I don't know, dude. The thing is, when you've got so many RC cars, you, the more RC cars you've got, the less use, use each one gets. And I do use them, but not not always not always on video. So a lot of the time I'm on my own and don't bother filming it. Because if it's if it's something that I've already filmed, I don't want to bore you guys and keep putting out the same repetitive content. So you know that's why I've got to keep using new cars. Right, let's get this armor over and get that over and done with. I really like these. Really impressed with this platform. Right, glovage back on. Can you do more short course trucks? Well, I've got the Lossy 5T coming out soon, that video. Are you going to do another drift car build? Um, I'm planning on doing an all out drift car build actually. And then probably give it away in the competition. Right. But these armor body clips are really difficult to get out. A pain in the butt, really. I don't know why I use. I don't know why I use body clips. It's so hard to get out. It's ridiculous. Ada Steve actually changes them. Ada Steve gets rid of the armor armor body clips and puts other ones in. Because every time we try and pull them out, you just rip, you just knack these little tethers. So we've got to change that tether as well. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Right. Uh, 
this arm here, look. Can you see? It's broken there. So, what is the best way of changing it? I'm not that familiar working on these, really. Um, yeah, this plate's got to come off here, probably. Well, it's got to come off anyway, because it's come unclipped. Do that. That. Have you started the RC toilet yet? No, not yet. Uh, how's that come off? I mean, more videos of us or two will drive, maybe. Best man on YouTube, thank you, Captain Cook. I've got a little bit of way to go though to get anywhere near Mr. Beast level. <laughs> but I appreciate you, dude. I appreciate all of you guys. Got to get all the dirt out of here. It's all full of mud. If you try and get your screws out of mud on there, you can round off the head, so then you'll never get them out. Please review Badlands on Creighton 6S. Maybe. You still go to Vegas? I haven't. I used to go every year, but you need the old jibby jab to go now. So I can't go. But and I've been so focused on work as well, so I'm not really, not really in the mood of holidays at the moment. Got ambitions to go after. I strip everything in plastic. <laughs> Traxxas Nitro, please. Yeah, I should get three Traxxas Nitros. I'm not a fan of their engines though, I just, they just don't seem to run that good. Is that coming off now? Nope, not that size! Do you know what, guys? What I hate on these is the sway bars. That sway bar is not going back on. They are so fiddly, it's on another level. Trying to get that in there and lining this up with a little clip that's in there, that's going to get you swearing. It's going to make a saint swear. So that is not going back in. I'm not putting that sway bar back in. So no, if I try and put that sway bar in, there's going to be a big rage coming. Let's get rid of it now. I'm getting rid of it now before I even get a chance to get anywhere near a rage. A gecko boat, any interest? Yeah, I ordered one, but then they said I don't make it anymore, so I never got it. So, yeah, unfortunately. No gecko boat for me. Right, so now, pull this pin out. Any plans on making Lambo radio control? No, not the Lambo, but I'll probably do it with the monster truck at some point. That out. Got to try and remember where the screws go. That's that out. Get wheel off. That make it easier as well. scale is that? Oh, I don't know. I think they call it temp scale, but it's very big for a temp scale. It's more one eighth scale. It's almost the same size as a full size one. Not that much in it. Can you show your nitro salad? I'll just show it, dude, if you want back the video. I'll just show it. I'm not going to show it again. I don't want to bore everyone. I've, I've just spent the past God knows how long going through every single car. So if you wind it back a bit, you'll see it. Hunter's new to RC. Channel's been a great help. Hey, appreciate it, dude. Right, 
Right, that's that out. Is this, I'm not even going to bother putting that sway bar on. It's so fiddly, look. Let me show you. Uh, the idea is cool, because the sway bar's on these tiny little links there. But if you try and locate this, uh, anyone that knows, knows. It's just, it seems easy. Look, that's just got to go in there. But you try and do that when it's on the car, and you've got to get both sides in at the same time. No, it's going to get a saint swearing. So I'm not putting them sway bars back in. And anyway, it's a, it's a basher, isn't it? You don't need sway bars on a basher. Uh, right. Honest feeling on Mini Max version two. Josh, all my everything I say on my channel is honest. I never say oh my honest opinion because everything I say is my honest opinion. You know, people that sort of say oh honestly, honestly this, honestly that, my honest opinion. All they're saying is that they're not honest the rest of the time. So I don't like to say words like that. So, you know, I'd rather just say my opinion is this. But yeah, my opinion is it's, it's brilliant. I prefer the big X Max. But if you want a smaller one, it's just as good if you like the smaller cars, but I prefer bigger cars. But yeah, epic RC. But given the choice, I'll have to X Max any day. But no, I don't, I, don't, I don't sign up to all this honest and honestly and truthfully and all this stuff. It just discredits you the rest of the time when you don't say it. Because basically all you're saying is that you're not honest the rest of the time. When are you running your MP10? I'll go away from Mick. But the weather's getting better now, so hopefully soon. You should never have sway bars on a basher. Well, Mr. J Bird Max, it all depends on the individual. Some people love sway bars and they can have them. Some people don't care, like me. I, I couldn't care less if it's on there or not. So, end of the day, with this hobby, it's whatever puts the biggest smile on your face. And if if having sway bars puts a bigger smile on your face, then you should use them. So that's the thing when it comes to RC. There's no right way of doing it. There's no wrong way of doing it. Some people are like abusing their RCs and finding the weaknesses and upgrading them. Other people are like just having them looking nice on the shelf. Uh, other people just like to use them normally and not bash them. So it's entirely up to you how you use your RCs. When I see people arguing, oh, you should do this, you should do that, you shouldn't do that. Everyone's different. It all depends which whatever method puts the biggest smile on your face. End of the day. Because if it doesn't put a smile on your face, then you're in the wrong hobby. I think I'm putting it back together, right? Where's your armor typhoon? I showed it a minute ago, dude. If you wind back the stream, you'll see it. You got a leftover screw. Don't know where it came from. <laughs> Typical, isn't it, eh? Typical. Favorite type of movies to watch? I don't really watch TV. No, I don't, I don't watch TV, so... Oh, man, he's fiddly. But probably old old Stephen King horror, horror movies are probably my favourites, I reckon. Like Langoliers or Maximum Overdrive. But I don't watch TV. I prefer watching YouTube. Uh, and what I prefer even more than watching videos is making videos. I get more enjoyment making my own videos than watching other people's videos. I think we should probably get the rear sway bar out as well, shouldn't we? What do you reckon? If we take the front sway bar out, should we take the rear one out as well? But, but having the sway bar on the back and not on the front, I should give it more steering on the front. And this could do a bit more steering, so I'm gonna leave it. We've got a spare screw. Where's this come from, anyone know? I don't know where that came from. I mean, I put that screw back in, that screw back in, I put the two screws back in there, that one's back in, that one's back in. So, I don't know where that one's from.
don't know where it's come from. Might have come from something else. I'd leave it. <laughs> Check the bulkhead. Don't know where it came from. Oh well. Oh well. Right, new tether. I actually put these tethers on most of my RC cars. So if you guys order that part number there, look, pause that there, makes it so handy. It just makes it so much nicer, not losing body clips. But the old body clips are too tight, really. I might try and bend them out a little bit to make them a bit looser. Put a link for Allen key for drills. I think there is a link if you go down there. There should be a link down there for that. Oh, whoops. <laughs> you don't want to be doing that next to that, next to that um, mammoth works. That one off, new one in. Is it much different between 4S and 6S Creighton? Yeah, completely different. Completely different platform. They look pretty similar, but they're completely different. If you're gonna leave it stock, I'd get the 4S. If you wanna severe bash it, then you're gonna have to put all the Scorch stuff on it or the M2C stuff on it and go and go mad with it, then get that one. But I think for most people, probably this one would be the one to go for. Alright, I'm gonna try and bend these body clips out a bit so they're not so tight. See how that, see how that goes. That's better. That's better, huh? Just bend, bend this out a bit. I don't need to be so tight, do they? Oh, that's better. I know I can get them out. Look. Yeah, that's better. That's better. XRT or X Max? Oh, I prefer the X Max. I like the, I like the clumsiness off of it. I like it so you can drive it on two wheels and wheel it and backflip it easy and all that stuff. I, uh, I'm more of a monster truck person, so I prefer the characteristics of it. But if you want handling, if you want it to be more stable, then the XRT. But they're both just as good. It all just depends what you like. Oh, yes. That's the way to do it, look. Just bend these clips out a bit so they're not as tight. Boom. Is your sensor up and running? Yes. Have you thought about two speed for your lossy 5T? Yes. Even though this one's got the 50 in there now, so I don't think a two speed would be any good for it. Right, that one's all fixed. This one's all good to go. And I am now gonna fix the DBXL petrol. That's my next one. Next one to repair. I'm trying to actually repair all my RCs. I, I hate it when my RCs are broken. I know it's all part of the fun. I don't mind if like a few are broken, but I'd like, I think like 20 of them that were broken. It was getting overwhelming. So I like to, if I break it, fix it straight away and then put it back on the shelf. Good. I don't like them all sitting around broken. So at the moment, it's not that many. I think the only ones I've got now, if you look at my little board here, we've got the DBXL, got a repair. At the suspension and servos, we got the Savage Octane, it won't start. We got the 5T, is a chassis, and it doesn't run away, so we got to sort out why it doesn't run away and make sure it doesn't do it again. Savage X is an exhaust. We've just done the Crate and 4S, we've done that one. Uh, Nitro Drift needs an engine, I've got that ordered, that's coming. Uh, so I should get this one fixed next week. Uh, maybe that one, I've got an exhaust, it might fit on it. 
this one hopefully should get fixed. I don't know about that one. I'll need to find some time. That one I'm going to work on it in a minute. So that's going to be almost all of my RC cars not, not broken. Uh, oh, pardon me. Hire someone to fix them, says Lyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I should really, eventually. I mean, at, at the minute, it's, it's not a full-time job fixing them. You know, I was doing when I do a live stream, so... If, if, if I had like a full-time job to give to someone to repairing stuff, full-time mechanic, I probably would. Yeah, R.C. Smith says, drives me nuts having a bunch to fix. You know what, on that list that I showed you on that board, it was all the way from the top to the bottom, all the way down, all broken. And I was like, oh man, I was just, I, when I went out bashing, it made me not want to bash because I didn't want to add to the list. But now there's barely anything on it. I wonder, my goal is, is to get that list to nothing so that everything's working, nothing's broken. That's the goal. But it, I sort of get it nearly there. Then I go out bashing, especially if Max comes out, he's a bad influence, and then the list gets bigger again. <laughs> When's the RC toilet? I don't know. We've got to do it at some point. Are you YouTubers going to race again? Yeah, we're doing um, a Tamiya TT02 race. Tamiya TT02s, everyone's got the same car. Because last time I won and they said that I only won because it's my local track. And, uh, and I had someone professionally set my car up. And I'd experience at the track and all that stuff. And I had all the latest and greatest gear in my car. And they were right. They were definitely right. I'll give them that one. So this time we're going to a new club that none of us have been to. And everyone's got the same car, not allowed to upgrade it. You can't really do much setup on there, so it's going to be a lot fairer race. So that's coming up soon. That's a lot of lightage, Kev. Yeah, those ones, I don't know why they're on actually. Those, those ones are just for when I do thumbnails. I've got a screen that comes down here. The other, the other side of this one, it's white. So that's what the lights are for, for doing my thumbnails. Where's Stempin? Oh, Stempy's all loved up. I see him the other day. He come over, but he's all loved up at the minute, so I don't see much of him anymore at the minute. <laughs> MT8 is still broken. Oh, that one I'm not even going to bother fixing. I don't count that one. I'm not going to bother fixing the MT8. The MT8 was so bad, and that happened, that it stayed on the shelf looking like that, because it's just no point fixing it. The minute you fart, that happens again. So I might as well just leave it. So that one's not even on the list. I'm not even fixing that one. Yeah, micro beer on new mug. I smashed the old one. This is a one litre mug. It is actually. That is one litre that goes in there. <sighs> Creighton 6S diff fix. Um, I don't know. I've always left them stock. Locked up in jail. No, not locked up. Loved up. He's got a girlfriend. <laughs> What's your opinion on petrol versus nitro? I like them both, but petrol's more reliable. Nitro is, mm, I don't know, smaller, I guess. What's your favourite temp scale car? Oh, I don't know. Creighton's pretty good. I'm trying to get the questions that are new and haven't come in yet. Have you seen the new Rolaro? Yeah, I've seen that. I haven't got one though. I, I didn't, they did offer it to me, but everyone's got one. And I, I, I want to be a bit different, you know. I don't, I don't want to jump on the same bandwagon as everybody else. So I, I might do one Monday, I don't know. But, you know, you normally see when a new new car comes out, I'm, I'm normally the last to review it. I'm, I'm never in a rush, you know. I, I, don't, I don't compete on being the first I'm getting videos out. I'll, I'll try and compete by putting the best videos out. So I'll, I'll never, rarely do I rush to try and be the first to get it out. I'll never really jump on that bandwagon. I'd rather get the video out like two or three months later and, and have a better quality video. What do you think of K8 versus XRT? XRT all the way, in my opinion. 
Do you still have the hang long tank? Yes. Can we see the monster truck? I showed it a minute ago, dude. If you wind it back, um, I showed it a minute ago. I don't want to repeat myself with stuff on the stream because I don't, for the people that have been here from the start, I don't want to bore them. Your vintage are the best as well. Thanks, dude. Any more vintage cars coming? Yes. Let me show you another vintage car that's coming, actually. That one there. The FG Beetle. So you can't get it new anymore. Let's get the lamp on. You can't get the FG. Well, that's the monster look, because you wanted to see the monster. Now we're in here, might as well show you it. But yeah, this was a dream car when I was a kid. I did buy one when I was a bit older and had a job. And then I sold it and I wish I'd have kept it. And now you can't buy them anymore. I bought this one off of eBay. But you can buy this one brand new, which is the same car, just a different body. So I'm going to keep an eye out on eBay for a brand new body and then put that body on there and paint it up in the same colour scheme as in the old magazine. That will be wicked. Oh, I've got this as well, look. The FTX thingy-majig. And I'm putting a R30, is it an R34? Yeah, Skyline R34 body, that's going on there. Yeah, there's that. Uh, there's all the old monster truck spares, look. Got a full set of eight spare shocks. Spare falling bomb, uh, for, falling bars, tie rods, tanks, load of stuff, rear steer stuff, rod ends, steering pumps, all the planetaries there. Oh, this is another vintage RC car that I got. And here's another vintage RC car that I got. Uh, both nitros. Yeah, so that'll come out soon. So that one's, I think that, I don't know what's in there, but I think that one's probably going to be another EK4, but one that's a lot nicer condition. And this one is a RC10 GT. I'm having quite fun with the vintage at the minute, actually. Getting, getting the old vintage ones and getting them going again. Especially the ones that I used to want when I was, when I was younger. So I'm actually on the lookout in a minute. I'm looking for a Schumacher Nitro 10. I used to have one. And it got so battered up and smashed, I think I chucked it away or, or got lost somewhere. I don't know. I don't know where it went. But I want to get another nice one if I can find one. What's up with the sausage? Yeah, sausage is there. Sausage is all repaired and good to go. So next for the sausage is going to be a long jump. TOX4 says Luke. Uh, TOX4M, uh, yeah, I probably will get one at some point. Two of RC10 TM Blackfoot, wee. Hey. Yeah, I might do the TLX 4 m at some point. But you know, as I said, I'm never in a rush. I'll just take my time on things. If like the opportunity arises where I can think I can make a half decent video, I'll do it. But I'm not really one just to get the new stuff, just to get a video out. I used to be back in the day, but not so much now. So I find if you do that, you, you start rushing the videos and then they, they don't come out that good. So I'd rather take my time on the videos and only let it out when I'm happy with it. Try find a two mach, Schumacher 32 twin. Oh, I don't think I've heard of that one. Quality over quantity, says Basher Bolly. That's it, absolutely. Do you take Lambo out? Yeah, I do. I, I haven't yet because the, the roads still have salt on them. So once it's rained a couple of times, the salt's washed away. The weather's getting better now. We'll get it out. I've got some plans for that Lambo, actually. Probably going to end up twin turboing it. Put a wrap on there, lower it down. I mean, I was going to go with a twit with the supercharger kit, but I've been talking. The, the supercharger kit's a nicer kit, and you get to keep the exhaust note of the Lambo. It, it stays more Lambo. It's more reliable, but you're kind of limited to that eight nine hundred horsepower. And if you want more, that's it. You're done. Also, with turbos, you can keep building on the kit and adding more and more and more. It's less reliable, but I don't do many miles anyway. Uh, the, you lose the exhaust note. Some people say turbo sounds better. I prefer the natural aspirated Lambo sound and the supercharger keeps it. But I think I'm all about more power. So I think it's going to be twin turbo. What do you guys reckon? What do you guys in the chat reckon? RC Smith says it works. Videos haven't been spoiled. Some videos take me months to make. I've got some videos that take a year to make. You know, I, I might start a video 
and then put it away in like, the car, have it sitting on the back burner, and it might sit there until like the next opportunity arises to take the car out to do something. So it's weird, you know, sometimes I might do a video and I'll get the same video filmed and edited and released in the same day, like on if I'm really doing a quick one, but that's rare. Other times I might start filming and the actual video is not going to come out until maybe a year sometimes. So that's why sometimes you see like the shop in here, sometimes it's back to the, the old layout and stuff. But I'd say normally most videos about a month turnaround. Yeah, a lot of people saying twin turbos. Will you ever see the Rockway again? Yeah, yeah, probably. Lyle says twin turbo is the best way to go. I wouldn't say best, it's just a different way to go. But the, the main thing that, that with the turbo is you could have it like 1200 horses on everything stock. Maybe up, maybe upgrade the clutch because if the, if the clutch goes apparently you blow the whole gearbox out, I've been told. So I'll probably do the clutch. Have it on about 1200 horses. I think you can get it up to about 1500 horses on like really minor mods. And then if you start changing the gearbox and opening the engine up and billet engine and all that stuff, you can get up to like 3000 horses on the turbos. But on the supercharger, you're kind of stuck at about the 800 mark and then that's about it. And then if you want more, if you want more power off, because you know, you know how it goes. Like when I first got the Lambo, I was like, whoa, this is so fast. And like now you're used to it and it's just normal. So you want a bit more. So if I put a supercharger on it, it'd be like, whoa, yeah, this is so fast. But then give it like another month or so. It's, it's normal again and you want more. But then you can't have more, you're done. You need to take it off and put a turbo on. So I think for me and, and knowing what I'm like, I'll get used to a certain power level and I always want more. And I think for content, it'll be better as well. Because if I just put a supercharger on it, that's kind of that video done and I can't really make any more videos. But if it's a turbo, next time I want to give it more power, that's another video, giving it more power, taking it to the tuning shop, getting it modified, more footage of putting the parts on there. Uh, you can take it Santa Pod every time and do some drift days with it. I think there's, for content, the twin turbo. And you've got anti-lag, you've got the flames firing out. I think, I think for content, I think turbo is the way to go. But they've both got pros and cons. It's, it's a difficult one. I mean... I was I was set on the supercharger, but now I think turbo. Put massive motor on the Russell two wheel drive. Ah, oh, dude, it'd just be unusable. It wheel is everywhere as it is. How much is reasonable for EK four? Ah, uh, I think I paid about three hundred pounds, something like that. I think. So it's hard to it's hard to say. It's all about the, uh, the condition of it and everything. So it's hard to, it's hard to know. At the end of the day, it's, it comes down to what's worth for you. I mean, I pay a little bit over the tops for a lot of stuff because I because I make YouTube videos with it. So I know any anything that I get, even if I overpay for it, I'm going to make a profit anyway because of the, the videos that I make and everything. So you know, if I just bought it purely for me, I probably wouldn't have spent that much. But well, I wouldn't have bought it in the first place. I only really bought it to bring back some memories and to do a fun video. <laughs> Turbo, however, produces its power over a longer stretch. Well, the thing is, those engines have got a lot of power off the mark anyway, so you don't really notice much turbo lag on the Lambos, I've been told. The supercharger, in my opinion, definitely sounds better. That's the winning point for me on the supercharger, is the sound of it. Yeah, super supercharger will definitely sound better. But I think I think it's all about the more power, isn't it? I think. Traxxas Bandit VXL, eh, maybe. Not really a two-wheel drive fan really. Sheepy Race Twin Turbo Kit. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking at, actually. Or one of the ones that I'm looking at. Would you buy RC cars off Marketplace? No. I'll buy them all off eBay. The trouble is, when it's Marketplace, you've got to deal with each person directly. And you've got to like, keep messaging each other. Too much messing around. 
And then you've got to try and get an invoice from them for the tax man because I've, I've put all my RCs through my business because it's all for YouTube. So it's just too much messing around. I don't bother with, with all that. I'd rather go on eBay, hit buy now, pay for it, invoice comes out, boom, done, easy. So if I if, if I was to ever buy any RC car from any of you guys, uh, you would have to put a listing on eBay and send me the link, and then I'd buy it that way. And I, I, would, I wouldn't mind paying the extra. You know, I know eBay are going to take their fees, probably about 15% all in. So I'd happily pay 15% extra for the convenience of having it on eBay. So stuff I'm after is, uh, I'm after that beast, beast biplane, you know, the, the, the Hangar 9 one. If any of you guys have one or know one, uh, I'll, I'll happily buy it from you if it's a good condition one, but you're gonna have to list it on eBay. And I'll, I'm happily paid a 15% extra when it costs on eBay, just for the convenience. Now, I think if a Savage, oh, I missed out. I missed out on a Savage Octane. It was a brand spanking new Savage Octane on eBay. It went for 500 pounds and I missed out on it. I wish I'd have bought it. So if anyone's got a brand new Savage Oct Octane, I'd happily buy that. A uh, new EK4, I'd happily buy that. Belt drive supercharger. Yeah, they're all belt drive, aren't they, superchargers? Uh, speedboat. I've got RC speedboats, no real ones though. Have you ever seen a tractor slash monster slash upgrade? Yes, I have seen it, but I've got no interest in it because I've got enough RC monsters anyway. But they are cool. You know, I've seen a couple of videos on them. They do look cool, but I wouldn't... I, I don't think personally I'll do it, though, because I've got enough monsters as it is and not many short courses. But I'm going to love you and leave you in a second. I'm just going to finish what's left of this chicory, which is almost gone. Would you build your own drone? Uh, maybe one day. I do want to get into them and I'll get the new property, hopefully, fingers crossed. There's enough land there so I can play about with stuff like that. I just want to be able to walk out my shop and fly it. I mean, now if I want to, if I want to take the drone out, I've got to put it in my car, I've got to drive somewhere, then I've got to hope there's no people, or, or I've got to go to the club. Then I don't know what I'm doing, it might work, it might not work, and it's just, I'll just put it off and don't do it. But if I can just walk out the front of my shop and just do it, uh, then I'll probably start using it more. Will you get a Thunder Tiger ZK2? I've never heard of one. Have you, uh, have you bought new property? Not yet. Going through the process at the moment. So maybe. It's looking good at the minute, but maybe. It's all, it's all in the hands of the legal people at the moment. You should try planes again. I will do. I will do planes again. Micro RC, fly anywhere. Yeah. Losing 22 for arc racetrack. What does that mean, Matthew? Losing 22 for arc racetrack. I don't know what you mean, dude. More monster truck. Yes. The next show I got booked in is in August. Same one. If any of you guys want to go, UK Monster Truck Nationals. Type that into Google. Get your tickets. Because they do sell out. You should get a jet. Yeah, I want to get a jet. Get Red Cat Everest 10, maybe. Koali Ty Python V2 Forts. I don't know, dude. I've never had one, so I don't know. Is the property beautiful? I wouldn't say... Well, I don't know. It depends what your class is beautiful. I mean, it's perfect for me. It's got lovely barns on there. For, for my RC content and for monster truck content and for any, any other YouTube content that I want to make and to live there as well for me it's perfect. You know it's not it's not a mansion, so it was mansion beautiful. No, it's not like that. It's not like one of these big YouTuber houses, but it's got loads of land. It's got really nice workshops. So for me, perfect. Do you like the wide kit for X Max? I've not tried it yet. I was going to put it on, but now I've got the XRT, I'm not going to bother.
Do you still have Russian indestructible bodies? I've still got the old X Max ones, but I don't run them because they don't get the clicks. I mean, if you're just bashing on, if you're just a basher, you don't care what it looks like, then they're brilliant. But for me, I like to have my RCs on the shelf and looking nice. I mean, when, when those, those basher bodies, I mean, they're awesome for bashing, but they just look so ugly. And when I look at my RC cars, I want to look at it and think, oh man, that's an epic toy. And when it's got the Russian body on there, it just looks so damn ugly. And, and it doesn't get the views, you know, you guys don't click on the videos. So, so no, I don't, no, I don't, I don't get them anymore. Um, beauty, beauty when it comes to bodies for me now. Really lovely videos. How do you clean your RCs? Oh, don't clean your RC cars how I do them. I jet wash it and then blow it down with a, a car air blower thing. But it's definitely not the proper way to do it. You push the water into places you shouldn't get into, bearings and stuff. But, you know, when you're like me and you've got to get content out, you haven't got time to take your RC apart and clean every nut and bolt perfectly. So that's the way I've got to do it. Ten million subs, send Lambo to the moon. <laughs> uh, if you get me ten million subs this month, I'll do it. Oh man, you go. That's why my husband sent you the airbrush body. Oh, is that from you? Thanks for that. The only thing is with me, it's I get really itchy with fiberglass. I'm allergic to it. So Vinny's put it onto his X Max, so you'll see it on there soon, <laughs> and then you'll you'll see you'll see on there the, the durability of it. But I like the idea of it. But if you're allergic to fiberglass, probably a bad idea. I mean, oh, on the monster truck, if if any work's got to be done on the fiberglass, I'll give it to Tony. I can't do it. I, I, I just it makes my whole body come up in a rash. <laughs> when are life hacks coming back? Oh, no idea. I mean. If you spread yourself too thin, then you can't really succeed at anything. He who chases two rabbits catches none. Lamborghini to the moon, what? Well, get me 10 million subs this month, we'll send it to the moon. What's the ESC for the Lossy 5T? What motor ESC? Oh, I don't know, Max 4 maybe? Probably be quite a good combo for that, for reliability and power. What do you think about the Traxxas plastic now? Well, it's still the, the, the strongest plastic, I'd say, in RC, but it's nowhere near as strong as what it used to be. Just in my opinion, maybe it's just me, but I, I feel the Traxxas plastic used to be a lot stronger. Well, I don't want to say for sure, because it might not be. It might just be that I'm bashing harder now. Have you seen the new Lambo? Yes, I have seen it. Um, it's, yeah, 1,000 horses, that's amazing. But I'm not really sh sure about the look of it, the front end, I'm not sure, I don't know. If I do like a SVJ version or something with a big wing on the back, maybe, I don't know, but I'm not a fan at the moment. But the same thing was when the STO came out, I didn't like it, but now I like it. I think that's the thing with the Lambos. When they first come out, it's a bit meh, nah, but then they grow on you. Let Stempy drive the laminator, no way. <laughs> <laughs> but saying that, my one, the Puffermante, when that one came out, I loved it on day one. I, I liked it straight away. How active are the haters? I don't know. I'll block them. I'll just block them so I don't see their comments. So I, I don't really, I don't really see them. You see one comment, you just click one little click, block, gone. See ya. I don't do negativity. I like to surround myself with positive people, and. If I see negativity, negativity somewhere, I'll just go the other way, in real life and online. So, you know, if I'm bashing somewhere and there's a group of neg negative people, I'll just walk away. don't want to be near it. If, if anywhere I go in life, if there's negative people, I'll just walk away. Same online. That's why I've left all the Facebook groups. Because I used to be in a lot of the RC Facebook groups and forums. But there's so much negativity in there, I just can't deal with it. I just, it just if, if you surround yourself with negativity, you become a negative person yourself. And I want to be a positive person, so I choose to surround myself with positive people. And, you know, you guys in the comments are all super positive, so it's great. If I start seeing negative people come in, it's simple. You just go click, block, done, gone. And I don't, I don't want you guys to be exposed to the negativity. I, I want to build a nice, positive community where all of us mind like-minded 
RC nutcases can get together, chat and have fun. So there's no space in this hobby for hate in my eyes. You know, RC is supposed to be fun. People that do all the hate in they're in the wrong hobby. So do one, get out. So, you know, people say, oh, what's all about freedom of speech? And it's like, well, it's my platform. Same as my house. If I don't like you, you're not coming in. So it's the same, exactly the same thing on YouTube. It's like my house. If I don't like you, you're not coming in. So, yeah. I don't mind constructive criticism. You know, if someone goes, oh, you're doing too much bashing, you know, it's getting a bit much, or oh, you're, you're, you're breaking too much, or your videos are getting a bit boring because of so-and-so, you know, that's constructive criticism. If you tell me something that's actually not just out of hate and negativity and jealousy, uh, you know, I'll listen to it. I, I won't necessarily act on it because, as they say, the customer's always right, but as a group, not, not only as an in individual. So if one person says, oh, Kev, your videos are getting boring, then it doesn't really mean much. But if all of you guys start saying, Kev, your videos are getting boring, then, then I've got to take it on board and see what I'm doing wrong. So there's a big difference between hate and constructive criticism. Haters do it normally out of jealousy. Um, you positive guys, you normally say it out of, out of because you want to help me out. You know, if, if I'm doing something wrong and doing something that's not good for the channel and you guys let me know, that's perfect. RC Smith goes, do you remember some of them? I do remember a lot of the names, but there's so many come up, it's impossible to, to uh, remember them all. But I do remember you, RC Smith, from today's stream. I've seen you a few times. I'm sure I've seen you before. But there's so many names coming in, it's impossible to get them all. I love your attitude. Great way to be. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, well, I just don't get the need for negativity. I mean, I know... Everyone's personality doesn't suit everybody. I know I can be annoying to some people, but everyone's annoying to someone. And, you know, you think about it. There's millions and millions of YouTube channels out there. And how many how many you subscribe to? Like a tiny handful. And all the other channels you just don't care for. So when you come across a video that you don't care for, you know, maybe, maybe the presenter is not your cup of tea, is, is not your personality type, the content's not your personality type. What does a positive person do? He moves along and he'll go and watch someone else. What's a negative person do? I should go on there. Ah, you, you're ugly. Oh, you're boring. Oh, you're too loud. Oh, you're, you're too, you're, you're stupid. Blah, 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 blah. Really, with these people, it's just a reflection of what they are. You know, normally when they're hating on you, it's out of jealousy. And, you know, it's, it's normally the people that have massive ambitions and are too lazy to act on it. Because you get people that just got like, you know, they've got a normal job. They're not making much money, but they're happy. They're happy with their job. They're happy with where they're living. They're happy with their friends and family. They're happy with the toys they've got. They don't want to make more money, and they're happy. And those people are fine. And then you get the people that are super ambitious, and they go out, and they want to better themselves. They want to keep reaching new goals, and, and they're actively going out, and they're doing it. Those people are, like, amazing as well. But then you get the person in the middle, the person that's got all the ambitions, highly ambitions. He, he wants to reach all these goals, but he's too lazy to do it. He's the one that you've got to watch because he gets jealous. He's the one that's going to leave all the nasty comments because he'll see the Lambo and he'll get jealous. And rather than to go out and to make it work, and anyone can have fun. There's so many ways online of making money. You can get your laptop and you can find a way of making money online that can get you a bleeding, stupid Lambo. I mean, it's not that difficult. It's like anyone can do it if you put your mind to it, if you really want one. But the dude that hates is a dude that's too lazy to go out there and do it. So that's why he's hating. Because the dude that's got that can't afford it but doesn't want it, he doesn't care because he doesn't want one anyway. And the person that, that, that's that got good work ethic and he'll work on, and he keep trying things and he'll get, get his business working, well, he can have it too. But it's just that person in the middle, that highly ambitious, lazy person. They're the ones you've got to watch out for. It's easy to complain. Yeah, that's it, micro builder. Those sort of people, rather than to go out and to get the nice things themselves, they'll, they'll think it's easier just to hate on those that have got to those sort of goals and stuff and, and think it's easier to bring them down so yeah that's it that is that is it christine hate is going to hate ignore them absolutely right so I'll, I'll go one step further and block them a lot of people say don't block them you're, you're better off just ignoring them but i don't i don't want all you lot being exposed to it you know i'm a believer that you're a net result of all the people that you hang around with so if 50 percent of the comments on the youtube for example are negative then you're going to be 50% negative yourself. So 
I don't, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see. I don't want you guys seeing it. I, I want. I just want a, a nice, positive community. And you know, we've got a lot of children on here as well, so we don't want them seeing all the negativity. It's just, there's just no need for it. You know, if you don't like my videos, watch someone else's. It's not difficult. We live in a world full of endless opportunities. Don't be lazy. That's it, Philip. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being lazy. I mean, some people they've. They go to the nine to a five. Yeah, you know, there is something to be said about a nine to a five job. You know, if you've got a job that you enjoy, you can just get out of bed, go to work, do what you got to do. You enjoy the job. You enjoy the people you work with. You come home, then you can put the TV on, put your feet up, and forget about work. Also, if you work for yourself, you kind of never forget about it. You do more hours. You, it never leaves your mind. Everything you think about really is work, and that's suit you for. To me, it's perfect. I don't want to do anything else. So, it, it all depends what makes you happy. You know, success comes in so many different ways. It all depends what your goal is. And when you get to that goal, then you're successful. When's the next monster truck show, says Lyle? In August. Modesty keeps you grounded and able to appreciate the meaningful things. Yeah, I mean, all this materialistic stuff, it doesn't make you any happier. I mean, the thing that makes me happy is the freedom to do what I want. Uh, you know, I'll tell you what really turned my life around the most. When I had the 9 to 5 job, I was miserable and I was depressed and I hated life. I used to wake up in the morning and I was like, why am I alive? He said, why am I doing this? I hate my job. I'm on minimum wage. I'm, I'm in debt. It's like, I hate every single day of my life. What is the purpose? So when I quit my job, I had even less money, but I had my time, I had my freedom. And I spent, you know, a couple of years of trying to figure out ways of making money online because my dream was always to have a laptop and I could make money from home or anywhere in the world. I could open up the laptop and I could make money. That was always my goal. So I, I worked my ass off and tried all these different ways of making money online until I found something that worked. And that, that was eBay and YouTube. Mike Pabiola says he makes way less working for himself, but he's way happier. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, once, once, I, once I was working for myself and I made enough money just to just to get by. I think that's when the most that's when the, the most happiness came. You know, when I got the Lambo, the happiness went up a little bit momentarily, and then it went back down to where it was before. Because it's just something materialistic, you know. It's fun. It's fun when it's fun when you first get it, but then it just becomes normal, and then the novelty is gone. It's back to normal. So with the monster truck, it's different. Because with a monster truck, it's a it's a passion, um, you know, building it. Like Ian and Claire were over helping build it. We had so much fun building it, taking it to the show, meeting new guys, coming to the show, getting you know getting involved with the whole monster truck community. Met all the great guys like Tony, and and all the guys that put the show on, and all the other monster truck drivers, and Mikey V Two Vids, and all. It's just such an amazing community, and in that way, that that materialistic monster truck, sort of. It gives you access to like another part of life, if you get me. So in that way, that's definitely made, made me a lot happier with the monster truck. But with a Lambo, it's kind of like you just buy it, it sits there, you drive it once in a while. So yeah, it's cool. It is it is fun driving it, but I wouldn't say it makes your life any better. I mean, maybe, maybe for someone where it's a dream. I mean, I can see if if you're a kid that had, if you're a person that had a Lamborghini poster on your wall, and it was always a dream to get one, and you finally get one, and then your whole YouTube channel is like like making Lambo content. You're going to all the shows. You're doing everything. Then you know. Then it could be a way of life, and it can obviously it's going to make your life better. But normally materialistic stuff is it it, it does help, but not really. Main happiness comes with freedom, health, and friends and family. Andy Landy make you happy? Yeah, I mean I love Andy Landy, but you know if if Andy Landy went away, I wouldn't. My life wouldn't be any worse. What are your goals in life? I've reached my biggest goal, actually, which is working for myself from a laptop. That was, that was the main goal. Having a monster truck was a goal. Uh, I've got other goals as well. I've got loads of goals. I mean, the list is like that long. You know, not all of them are going to be achievable, but, you know, some of them become achievable. Some of them might become achievable later on. Some of them maybe never. But to me, the fun's kind of the journey of getting there anyway. You know, like the Lambo, the fun was getting there. Once you got it, it's like massive dopamine hit for the first day. And then 
After a couple of weeks, it goes back to normal. Oh, Lyle says he put six G's worth of RCs because of my bids. Well, that's the thing with RCs as well, you know. It's not so much the possession that makes you happier, but it's the whole community. You go out with friends, you have fun, you, you know, you're getting exercise. It keeps you busy when you're wrenching on them. So, you know, for that, it does it does, does make your life better. Tom Lee goes, meeting me was a goal. <laughs> yeah, it was good meeting you, Tom Lee. I enjoyed it. I really did enjoy meeting you, Tom Lee. Me and Tom Lee were haters back in the day. We hated each other. Well, I never hated Tom Lee, you know. I, I, I just um, I just thought he was a bit of a knob, but I never, I never hated him. And um, I mean, we were both knobs, really, weren't we? And then um, after we stopped being knobs to each other, we got on really well on Facebook, and we've met up a couple of times now, racing and stuff, and get on well. So yeah, it's all good. No, I enjoyed it, Tom Lee. I enjoyed enjoyed meeting up with you, Tom Lee. I enjoyed it. Tom Lee goes, no, nah, not haters, we just wound each other up. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I never hated you, Tom Lee. I did, I did think he was a bit of a knob, though. <laughs> Chad goes, boo, Tom Lee RC. Nah, Tom Lee makes good videos. I, I, I enjoy Tom Lee's videos. I mean, Tom Lee's actually one of the few YouTubers where I watch most of his videos. <laughs> Tom Lee goes, I am a knob. <laughs> We're all knobs, aren't we? <laughs> Tom Lee's goal is beating you at racing. Well, he's got another chance coming up soon with the old Tamiers. Oh, see, Smith goes, you grew up on YouTube together. Yeah, I don't know, who started first, Tom Lee? Was it me or you? I think your channel's older than mine, but I think I probably started doing regular content before you. I can't remember. Things change when you get older also. Yeah, yeah. What's the best shock hole to use on an eye track? Oh, God knows, dude. You must have bought the Lambo as an investment. No, not really. I mean, I bought that. I, ne I was never into supercars. And Stempy goes, you know, I like the American muscles and classic cars, you know, like a 1964 Beetle. I'd love one of those. I'd love a Hemi Cuda, Dodge Demons, all that stuff. I love them. I was actually going to get a Dodge Demon, but... By the time I had enough money to get one, um, you couldn't get them new anymore. And the only ones you could get were people that were selling second-hand ones. And they were supposed to be like 80 grand and people were selling them for like 150. So I was like, no way I'm paying double for one, like a used one. So I went with Stempy to London, looked at some Land because that's what Stempy wanted to do. Stempy wanted a day out in London to look at some supercars. I sat in one of mine, like, not, not you know, a Performante, but not actually my one. It was like a... If you look at my Instagram, you can see it on there. It's like a purpley, pinky looking thing. So I sat in it and I thought, it's actually quite nice, you know. I always thought they're just flashy. I didn't know they, they were actually fast. And I thought, it looks really good. Then he started it up. I was like, whoa, that sounds amazing. And then I went home, looked at some statistics. And it was actually like one of the fastest cars that you can get. And I was like, whoa, uh, it's actually pretty good. So then um, I bought one. I spent, <laughs> I spent the monster truck money on the Lambo. And then I have to save up for the monster truck again. <laughs> uh. Optional model trains. They are cool to look at, but it's not really my sort of thing. Which bash should I get because I'm on a budget? I would say the rival MT10 without a doubt. It's the cheapest good basher, I would say. <laughs> so we go, Tom Lee's still a knob though, you've got to admit. Well, Tom Lee admitted himself that he's a bit of a knob. I'm a bit of a knob as well. What are you drinking? I'm drinking chicory. Oh yeah, there you go. Tom Lee's actually a, a moderator on the thing, so Tom Lee can... Tom Lee can time you out if you're being, if you're being rude. <laughs> How about a Big Rock? Yeah, Big Rock's epic, but I think the Associate is a bit cheaper. Did Hardcore give you K8 limit straps? Uh, no, I didn't. he didn't actually. 
But I haven't used it in so long. Does, does it need limit straps on there? I can't, remember, I can't remember if it needs them. I mean, if it needs them, I'll put them on. But if it doesn't need them, then um, I'm, not, I'm not one for putting modifications on that, that I don't need. You know, some people just enjoy, enjoy putting every single upgrade on. Like, like ASD, if any upgrade you give ASD, if you'll put it on. And, you know, with RC, as I said earlier, you've got to do whatever puts the biggest smile on your face. And for me, I get the biggest fun of getting a new RC car, taking it out like a, give it an absolute kick in, see where the weak spots are, then get upgrades and try and make the RC so durable that you can like, it can survive things that it shouldn't. And, and always making them a little bit better and better and better. So that's where I find the fun in the hobby. So often like M2C will send me like all the upgrades of like all, all of it. But I'm, I'm only going to put on what I know is a weak spot and what I've already had break. And then as time goes on, I'll start putting the bits on, you know. So I'm, I'm not one for just putting things on just because they're blingy. I'll just put them on as they've got a server purpose. And I can't I can't remember on the on the Creighton if it needs limit straps or not. I can't remember. Valley Skeeter, anyone raising the bar? Uh, yeah, nah, I, I, I don't know about the Skeeter. I mean, it's good, it's a good car, but I definitely wouldn't say raising the bar. You know, if, it, if it's going to raise the bar, it's competing against this and the Minimax. And I'd say I prefer the Creighton and I prefer the Minimax. So I don't, I, uh, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's raising the bar. <laughs> SN, SN AFU is winding up Tom Lee's. They only know with Tom's coming out for being called a knob. <laughs> uh, let's, see, let's see if he gets timed out. <laughs> I'm not going to time you out. If Tom Lee wants to time you out, he can. <laughs> what have you been bashing recently? Uh, I've been doing more of the petrol stuff. Uh, I've had the Lossy 5T out yesterday, and oh my god. Not yesterday, a couple of days ago, I, I pretty much destroyed it. So I've got to rebuild it again. I uh, had the Savages out. Uh, I had the Kaisho 10, what's it called? Bloody MP10 Truggy. I had that one out the other day. I would like to hear your opinion on Armour Typhon and Limitless. Limitless, amazing. It's like the Infraction is one of my favourite all-time RC cars. Typhon's a good buggy. TP Power Motors or Castle? Oh, I don't know. Ask Rez. I think, I think it might be Castle at the moment. I'm not sure. Both are good, though. Do you really drive monster trucks? Yes. Well, I've done one show. I'm not an expert by any means. I'm a complete beginner. But I did, I've done one show with it, and I've done one practice show with it. So I don't know if that counts... I don't know, does that make me a monster truck driver? Am I, I don't know, you guys let me know in the chat. Am I a monster truck driver? I mean, I've done it, I've done one show and one practice day. If that makes me a driver, I don't, I don't know. What do you guys reckon? Fastest basher, oh, I don't know. My, my fastest basher is a sausage. That got over 100. Are you going Rossa next year? Probably, I'm going this year, next year, probably. You guys are all saying, yeah. <laughs> Villaro opinion. I don't know. I've not had one. Of course, you're a monster truck driver. I don't, I don't feel like I really fully deserve the title, really, because I've only really done it once, like one show, haven't I? But I guess I am, technically, but I don't, I don't feel like one. Yes, Kev, makes you a monster truck driver. Yeah, yeah, you, you guys will say I am. Yeah, I agree. I, I guess I am, but I don't... I, I don't know, I'd say a full monster truck driver, someone that does it, like, for a living, like, all the time. I mean, I'll just do, like, the odd the odd one, and, and if I get when I get this new... Or if I get this new property, or, uh, if all the legal stuff goes through, I'll be using it for monster truck, for YouTube content. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I am, aren't I? <laughs> but not, not a full-time one. Maybe a part-time part one. So I'm a part-time 
Part-time driver, say that. You built it? Yeah, I did build it, yeah. Me with help from friends. Get the new Bolaro, maybe. Maybe. Jabby says, maybe not yet, Kev. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of what I'm feeling, not, not fully. One's a truck builder, owner and driver. I'm definitely a, well, I've built one. I don't know if that, I don't know if that makes me a builder. <laughs> owner, yeah, definitely owner. Driver, uh, maybe. Newbie monster truck driver, yeah, I'm a newbie one, yeah. Long jump when, I don't know yet, some point with the sausage, I don't know when. No date booked yet. Would you ever consider driving a dragster? I'd never get in a top fuel dragster, no way. Are you planning to have enough room to use the monster truck at your new house? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I did want to build a full... There's enough room there to build a full-size monster truck track. But I don't know if planning people would like it. If I, if I put all containers there with backflip walls and stuff and massive jumps everywhere, I, I'm not sure how that would go down with the council. <laughs> so we have to wait and see on that one. But yeah, I'll definitely have a jump there and... And like, you know, some props for different videos and stuff. But whether whether or not it can be like an actual full-size track, I don't know. Don't tell them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we will see. We'll see. Just build it anyway. They won't notice. But the good thing is about this property, you can't really see it from the road. So, you know, I was really particular when I get my new property is that you can't see it from the road. Otherwise, otherwise, people are going to be driving past me. Oh, yeah, look, that's where Kev lives. You know, I don't really want people to know what my address is. So, no, it's perfect, this place. I just hope all the legals go through and it all works out. I've driven game over in Beam NG. Hey, nice, dude. Yeah, if any of you guys have got Beam NG with the, is it called Beam Monsters or something? A plug in, it's got my monster truck on there and you can drive it. Will I ride cheapest when it's one hundred mile an hour RC thing is possible? Yeah, but I don't. I, it's possible, isn't it? I mean, who knows? No neighbours is my dream. I mean, it's it's not completely secluded. I mean, it has got neighbours down the road. But they're sort of far enough away to to hopefully not hear the noise. But that monster truck noise goes for a mile, so you probably would still hear it. Make a bashable tummy up. Oh, they fall to bits, don't they? Clarkson style, do as you please. Yeah, I'm I'm normally one just for doing it, and then it's easier to apologise afterwards than it than it is to ask for permission and for them to say no, isn't it? I mean, what's the worst going to happen if I build a monster truck track in my backyard and I say I've got to get rid of it? And all right, get rid of it, isn't it? <laughs> it's only it's only a few dirt mounds, isn't it? Came over, can be heard on the moon. <laughs> 100 mile an hour in the real monster truck. I mean, it's possible. I mean, you've got to change the gearing. I've got f three different gearing options for it. And on the middle gear, the two gears are the same, so you can't swap them around. But on all the other gears, you've got one gear that's bigger than the other one, and then you can swap them around to gear it down or gear it up. So, and they're quite cheap. I think it's like $200 for like a gear kit. So, and they do loads of different ratios, so I could definitely gear it to do 100. Don't know how safe it will feel going that far, so on those tyres. <laughs> do you long jump the sausage? I will do. You should do an exo cage done and build a basher truck. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm more of a hitting jumps kind of guy than going around a dedicated track. So I'll probably have it more like a monster truck, mini monster truck jet track, where it's got loads of jumps and all different angles. And, and different parts of the property, I have different jumps and things, so everything looks different. I, I, mean, I, I don't know if I'm going to have a set track where you've got to go around it a set way. I mean, there's enough space to do it, but maybe, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. 
But I, I, I'd rather just have loads of different jumps. <laughs> Tommy's to start a new company, call it Kev Storage, and no one will question the shipping containers, yeah. <laughs> Primal MT10, what do you mean Primal? Associated MT10, you mean? But no, there's a new one come out, that one's discontinued. But there's a new one that's come out, which I believe is exactly the same, just a different colour body. What's your opinion on modifying toy grade RC cars? Will it be worth it? If it puts a smile on your face, dude, it's worth it. Ian's, Ian and Claire have done a few. Before I laugh. What country are you in? Is this an Australian accent? A lot of people, when I went to America, a lot of people thought I came from Australia. I know, England. To, like, to me, it's really obvious when you hear an Australian that they're from Australia. But I do get mixed with New Zealand and Australia, I get mixed up. Like, to me, they sound the same. And also, I know some of you guys are going to get offended, I get mixed up with American and Canadian sometimes. It, it sounds really similar. But I'm getting better at telling the difference. And then, you know, American people, they, they struggle to tell the difference between English and Australian. And like, to me, it's obvious. English and Australian is, like, to me, a mile apart. It's so obvious. You don't sound Australian. <laughs> no, well, where, where are you from, Jabby? I suppose. So to any of you American people, is it obvious that I'm English or could you could I be mistaken for being Australian? O only American people answer. Because I know obviously to English people it's obvious and to Australian people it's obvious. But to American people, is it obvious? My problem is English for sure. Hey, ho, bio, hi, pal, VS opinion. Oh, I love them, dude. Really good. English, English, English. When I went to Vegas, a lot of people said Australian. Sounds the same, but change of words. To me, it sounds completely different. The, the way that makes me uh, tell apart the Canadians is when they say out, they say oot. Let's go oot side. <laughs> that's, that's how I can tell straight away when, when they say oot. I know straight away that's a Canadian. Nitros on a come back up again, what do you think? Oh, I don't know. I mean, HBI coming out with more Nitros. I do like Nitros, if you don't mind messing around. Jimbo says Aussies have to have the best accent. Everyone likes an accent. Vegas is awesome, yeah, I like Vegas. Right, guys, I'm gonna love you and leave you. My drink's gone. I'm gonna start working on my DBXL. Um uh, actually no, I'm gonna go home and get some food. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'll probably put it on the bench ready and start working on it tomorrow. How's that? Right, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you. Uh, another video coming out in a couple of days. We've got the XLT durability video. We've got the Lossy 5T durability video. We've got an infraction video as well. Uh, we've got the speed sausage video as well coming out soon, next few days. So, um, yeah, see you soon, guys. Thank you for keeping me company and being awesome. So, love you all guys. Laters. Bye.